Hello guys, My, uh, Mark Wood here. Hey, um, I had a request to, more than one request actually, to um, show you how I made this control line, uh, remote controlled stooge device that uh, I was flying yesterday, day before. And some people asked me about the parts and how they made it, how to connect it. And it's really kind of a, a simple device. And I wanted to show you uh, what I have going on here. Right now, the airplane, the airplane's in, um, hooked up to the to the stooge, and um, it it hooks into this piece right here, and it hooks in by um, just uh, simply doing this. And I missed it that time. Looks like this. That'll retain the airplane. <clears throat> and then to activate the stooge, I just use this. Um, button right here and uh, it pulls that back and the airplane takes off and uh, it works actually quite well I was really really pleased with it that's my shoestring my shoestring center it's a Brodak version um, I've been working on it uh, this is uh, the uh, poly span yeah I kind of like that stuff quite a bit <clears throat> but then I'm kind of an old guy, and I like I like dope and fabric. Uh, as you can see, we are doing a repair here on this wing. We got to take those fuel tanks out of that airplane. Mm. So uh, that's Tabria. Those things are a lot of fun to fly. So anyway, I uh, figured I'd show you some of the the design considerations that I went through in this thing. Um, the primary one is that it has to be easy to operate. It has to be easy to reset and. Um, the way way this resets is uh, once once it's tripped, uh, the power's off and it's free to move. And uh, because of the way this is designed, when this pin is in here and it's pulling on this part right here, it's not going to go anywhere. It doesn't take any force uh, in this part of the system from the solenoid to retain the airplane. The only thing the solenoid does is pull the pin on command. You know, I'm doing nothing. I can do this all day long, but when I push that button, see, it pulls back, and I can't reset it. But if I let go, it goes like this. And so this this um, key fob device is programmable. Actually, it's the receiver part that's programmable. <clears throat> and uh, hopefully, I can show you how to program that correctly. <clears throat> um, sometimes I have to go back and review the instructions. God forbid, read the instructions. So um, the the device is really pretty easy. Um, one of the other criteria is it's got to be it's got to be cheap, you know, not very expensive. And uh, I uh, I have a battery here. This particular battery is a serviceable battery, but the one that I use normally with this thing is a um, it's an old battery. Uh, the primary criteria of the battery it's got to deliver at least 12 volts. Doesn't have to have a lot of a whole lot of current. This this receiver uses just a few milliamps. And uh, a little watch battery would keep that thing going for a day or two if it had enough voltage. Uh, when this thing fires, it's going to pull a couple of amps, so um, the, the battery doesn't have to be that big. These just happen to be batteries that I've got from uh, flying helicopters and stuff, little helicopters. So um, it should be easy, and this is really quite easy. Um, the other other big criteria is it has to have enough enough force this actuator has to be strong enough so that when you have an airplane tugging on this pin right here you know and, and pugging, tugging really really hard it can pull against that uh, that pin so in my in my search um, I saw these door lock actuators they're not very expensive they're about 10 bucks a piece uh, this thing with the key fob is about ten, twelve dollars, depends on where you get them. And um, <clears throat> but the problem is you can only get two or three of those in a package. Um, so, so this is this project is probably about you know thirty dollars worth. Um, this part right here, it's aluminum. I machine that out of aluminum. There's no reason you couldn't you couldn't machine this thing uh, out of out of plywood. You could carve one out of plywood, or you could do a whole bunch of different ways to do it. But if you look at it, here's what's going on, see? This pin, this pin has to have a long support. 
so that whenever this is pulled back it just it's supported in here and the reason it's it's like that is because i didn't want it to fall out and then you have to futz around with putting this back in the hole to make it work again so if it goes back in here it's supported and you just push this back and that pin goes back in place <clears throat> and it holds and then there's just two screws those are uh one and one and five eighths inch lawn number six screws and that's just a that's just a um a wood screw also i think it's an inch and a half thereabouts whatever whatever is long enough to get mostly through this piece of three quarters inch plywood <clears throat> so that's the, the the basic design this is welding rod right here you know that stuff's cheap it's like six bucks for two pounds or some some crapola like that you know uh, yeah yeah uh yeah it's late at night might as well drink beer here while we're talking about uh about cool stuff so the big question on on people's minds is um is the is the um how how this thing works and how do you connect it and so forth and and here's my schematic right um we have the we have the key fab and a key fob and if when i push the button the key fob creates a um a signal does some fbm and transmits that fbm over the airwaves and uh it's it's caught by the receiver here's here's the box it's caught by this receiver right here here's the antenna and then this this little circuit in here it decodes that signal and it trips the relay so in the schematic, you know, the, the, the signal goes into the antenna, goes into the FPM box. Then the FPM box energizes the, the relay. A relay is just a switch. I've drawn this little blue line here. Um, but a relay is just a switch. There's a coil inside. Whenever you put, put current on that coil, it causes the switch to go from one side to the other. Or to go from closed to open or from open to closed, depending. Uh, this particular style of relay has a switch that's got both conditions in it in one switch package. And so <clears throat> my connection here, and this is how this thing works, my connection is if you look at the if you look at the package right here, it's got NC, which means normally closed, COM, which means common, NO, which is normally open. N minus, which we call ground, and N plus, which is the um, power side from our battery, and I've got it laid out right here. This is how my how my circuit's built. So the battery comes in and it supplies power to the FBM box, which the FBM box can run the relay. It can change the state to this switch. <clears throat> It also supplies power to the solenoid. Here's the solenoid, that's this part. Comes in just like this, P supplies power, and then the, the solenoid comes back to the normally open switch condition. Because what, what the relay does is it causes current. It closes this circuit and allows the current to go through that solenoid. And so when, when, I, when I do this, like this, or I do this like this, then that switch closes and when that switch closes it allows the current to flow through the switch and then it goes back this way and there's a jumper here that's what what this is this is a jumper that jumper allows the current to go back to the battery which energizes the solenoid it's uh very very simple actually so <clears throat> beforehand i've made i've made this um jumper let me let me do this here let me show you let me show you a little bit about this guy right here i'll do this careful of those open wires man they can they can do bad things if you're not careful so if i do this you see it it closes 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 the actuator if i change the polarity right you see it it trips it to the it makes it go out see that it makes it go out change the polarity it makes it go in and this is why or one of the reasons why i selected the door lock actuator um, the other reason is, you know, door locks take quite a bit of load sometimes. And then uh, probably the best reason is these things are cheap. Uh, compared to a normal industrial grade actuator, you know, um, this thing's 10 bucks, right? 
Um, one that we would run machinery on might cost us 30, 40, 50 bucks. Um, so let me let me disconnect this here. We don't need those open uh, hot wires flowing around. These batteries will deliver a whole bunch of current, make whole lots of hurt on you if you're not careful. So <clears throat> this jumper is going to go in here and and here just like this. I'm going to tighten. I'm going to tighten this one down right here. See right here. Hope you guys can see this. Hope I got the camera pointed right. Do I got that camera pointed right? Look here. Yeah, it looks like I got it pointed right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm having fun. I don't know if you guys can tell or not, but I'm having fun. So I'm going to pick the ground side. It's this flat side of this T connector, and that, that ground side is going to go in here just right alongside my jumper. Just like that. I'm going to tighten that down. Just like this. And then, um, I've already figured out that I need the green wire is going to go in with the um, with the plus wire. So I'm going to put my I'm going to put my plus wire in first, and I'm going to stick my green wire in right alongside it, just like this. I'm going to tighten this down. And now I've got shadows here. You know, I don't have I don't have the best light for um, doing video stuff. This is my home shop. In my um, my shop where we uh, work, we have a gun shop. Yeah, we sell guns, ammo, we make ammo. Um, I got much, much better lighting in there for doing camera work, because we take pictures of cameras, uh, guns. And so now I'm just going to put, I'm gonna put this return part in here, just like this. Now I gotta program this this box while I'm at it. Programming is pretty simple. What what you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna set the mode. There's um a few different modes in this box. And the way they come programmed is um they're they're programmed for um push the button once, it turns it on, push the button off twice, it turns it off. That's great for lights. Um on our camper we're always arriving at the, the campsite late, and it's always a bitch trying to set up in the dark. And so I got me a whole bunch of those 12-volt uh, flood lamps and uh, several of these and a key fob that had four functions on it. And uh, so with the four functions, I can light up the front, the back, and the sides of my camper and turn them on and off at will. And... Uh, and we can set the camper up. So, so here's the programming sequence. This button right here is the programmer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push it and we're gonna hold it. We're gonna watch the, watch the, the little LED light right here go. It's gonna stay red for a little bit. And then what it's going to do is it's gonna switch into different modes. And it's gonna go one, that's gonna go two, and two is the on and off mode. And so I'm gonna push it, I've let go at that point. I'm gonna push it again and I'm gonna wait till it turns red. When it turns red, I'm gonna let go and I'm gonna push the button that I want programmed and you see how it flashed. Now this guy is programmed. And, it, and I've just put it into the mode where it comes, the way it comes, because I wanted to show that to you. And so here's what happens. See, I push it, it holds, and it holds tight. I have to push it again to turn it off. And that's really, really good for controlling lights, um, which is what we do on our camper. That's not what we want to do on this thing. See, what we want is this. We want it to go this way. Put this one's on the A button. Push the A, and once I let go of the button, it turns off. Now, if I do this, see, and I hold the button, right? It's on, right? I let go, then this turns off. So when I'm getting ready to fly, you know, that motor's running, I'm sitting there with my control line, I'm like going, oh yeah, let's go, and I can go. And the airplane goes flying and life is good. And then I can worry about the airplane, I can put this in my pocket, and uh, this thing's not drawing current, and this battery will last a long time. <clears throat> so um, to program it that way, we're going to go like this. I'm going to push this button right here, this one. I'm going to hold it. It's gonna turn red, it's gonna turn back green again. 
It's going to flash once, and I'm going to let go. Okay, and then I'm going to. I'm, where where did I set that key fob? Oh, I put it in my pocket. Ah, check that out. I'm, gonna, oh, I'm always doing that. I hate that. I'm going to push this again until it turns red. Then I'm going to push my button, and it's going to flash, telling me that it's programmed. I'm going to check it, and it works. See, works. Works good. Works good last long, right? Super easy. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to um, I'm put some links in the in the um, comments section, and uh, also if you guys, if anybody's interested, uh, you can let me know, and uh, I can put a kit together for you, give you the parts. You know, I can I can solder this uh, connector on for you, that kind of thing. I don't know what the price would be. I'm making one of these one of these guys right here. That little block is pretty slick, and uh, it uh, it works. So it's going to take me time. So you got to pay a little bit of money for me to, to to do that for you. You know, free exchange of my time for for cashola, and uh, I'm happy to do it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Bye. It's still on.